Yes, good afternoon, everybody. I'll share our experience uh, at Victoria Seeds Limited, what we do to improve productivity and also link farmers to market. So to take our mind back to Uganda and uh, really uh, figure out what the farmers we are talking about look like or their circumstances, I have a three-minute video. Is it ready? We'll first review it, then my comments will follow. Victoria, an idea of a seed company was born in 2004, Victoria Seeds Limited. Its founder, Josephine Okot, envisioned a company that would draw from that massive inspiration to ensure that all farmer categories can easily access improved quality seeds, especially in Uganda, where demand for seed was over 30,000 metric tons, yet less than 30% of that demand was being met. The company's core business is to transfer seed technologies developed through research into the hands of farmers. Victoria Seeds now has grown into one of the leading seed houses with an annual turnover of 3,000 metric tons. Its unique business model ensures that company growth is not only driven by profit, but integrates smallholder farmers in its supply chain to spur community growth and development. Rural farmers, who are mainly women, form the core group that grows and supply the seeds which the company markets. The company currently works with 900 farmers whose families are dependent on Victoria Seeds for their livelihood. Victoria Seeds Limited provides training to the farmers in, the, in our supply chain. And uh, this is very specialized training in seed production so that these farmers are able to isolate their seed crop, they are, sub, they are able to rog it and ensure that the crop or the output has the purity, the genetic purity expected from a company. Although they are, they are small, they are able to achieve this, but this takes a lot of hard work from the company as well. And we do that or go that extra mile because it is in our business model to develop the communities in the area in which we operate. The company, which started with five employees in 2004, today employs up to 100 people. Victoria Seeds is engaged in research, having realized that yields realized at research level are very high, yet farmers get about a third or even less of the optimum yield. Victoria Seeds became a winner in the 2011 Africa Awards for Entrepreneurship and was specifically recognized for its outstanding work in supporting, promoting, and mentoring women. Okay, there we are. Yeah. So I, I, I'll really talk about the facts on the ground. So as private sector, you expect that uh, I'm bringing the realities we face. I. As to improve productivity, first of all, before you link farmers to the market, you need a robust seed system because such a system would ensure there is timely and efficient delivery of good quality seeds to farmers. So in our experience, what does it take to have a well-functioning agricultural input market? The first one on our list would be extension, efficient extension, because uh, I would say when I was a little girl growing up in the 1970s, you'd have extension officers coming to every rural area and speaking to the household, but they don't exist anymore. What happens? You get a call from this farmer that has bought our sunflower seed and probably has put it like uh, 30 meters below, and the seed can't come. He says it doesn't germinate, or <coughs> maybe even a basic basic thing like how to apply fertilizer and they do not know that you should first put the fertilizer 10 centimeters below then cover it five centimeters you put your maize at times they put it together and the, the seed just dies off and they call and say your seed 
does not germinate. And when you come to vegetable crops, it's horrendous. They don't even know the first step in raising a nursery bed. So it's a huge challenge. Yes, as a seed company, we put demonstrations. We try to promote our technologies. But basically, I think it is government's responsibility to make sure that every household is able to access good quality extension so they know the, the, the planting rate, they know the, how to apply fertilizer and how to manage any crop and diseases that come. A seed company cannot be all over the country. From the uh, National Development Report, only 14% of farming households are presently accessing extension. The second one, which is really critical, is markets. It is market that drives demand. So if you, we don't have the marketing infrastructure and a solid post-harvest value chain, then it's impossible for, for, for farmers to be successfully linked to market. So that brings me to, to something that either has always baffled me. For the last 50 years, a lot of development aid has been pumped into Africa with the intention, of course, of supporting the small farmers to improving their livelihood, making them food secure, reducing poverty. But seriously, if that has worked, would I have those small farmers using the hand hoe 50 years? So I personally think probably the beneficiary is right, but they were targeting the, the wrong mechanism for delivery. To us, we see that instead of focusing on the farmers, they should focus on the business like us. They should be developed, supported to become globally, not regionally, globally competitive. If we are globally competitive, then we'll drive the demand. F or we are the ones, the ones that add value will enable the farmers' output to always have a market. <coughs> and they'll come with the innovation that encourages research that is market-driven, new products, and it doesn't matter what happens to, to, to one part of, to, to, to the production in one part of the country. If a company is globally competitive, the demand always comes in. Because we have a situation in Uganda where you have, in 2010, I had um, customers lining up at the gate, a queue for seed. There was huge demand, and farmers went out and produced their crops, but mainly zero crop. I would highlight maize and rice. What happened? The, there was extra production, and we didn't have the marketing infrastructure. So the price collapsed like eight times less. So which farmer in his right mind would come back for seed? So the next season, you are totally stuck. The inputs can't move, and the farmers can't really make any headway. So we need uh, marketing infrastructure, and that means we need uh, uh, storage and warehouse. And you cannot have storage and warehouse in rural areas without rural electrification, because the farmers need to process before they store. So we need primary uh, el uh, rural electricity for primary processing. So I just uh, think without uh, a well-developed value chain, it's impossible for, for farmers to be linked to the market, however much we try to do it. So we need to have a value chain that is well-developed. I think in the report I saw the example of, of Mokwano, which is one of the success cases of sunflower. But even now, when you go to the farmers up north that grow sunflowers, because I'm on the ground, they just change their minds. They are no longer producing it because uh, they, they got, we got the inputs, the seed, and the farmers produce lots of sunflower. And then I think the competition is not much. So Mukwana was selling at 1,200 shillings, I'll use shillings, for per kilo to the farmer, which is like uh, is it 50 cents, no, 70 cents. And the price was dropped 50% to 600 shillings a kilo, so no farmer is interested in growing sunflower anymore. They are growing corn, they are growing soybean. So the reality is unless there is global competitiveness. So this farmer shouldn't depend on Mukwano. That's what I mean. It should not depend on one, one uh, 
oil miller. There has to be competition. They should go to Tanzania. They should go to the regional market and be able to, to, to supply any, any, other, uh, any other buyer. So without that market, it's critical. Then the, the third key one is regulatory framework. As the seed sector in an emerging market, you really need some form of regulation because there's lack of capacity. If uh, there's no regulation, then you have substandard or what we call fake seed getting into the marketplace. And that compromises our market because a number of times they just take advantage of the farmer's lack of information and they supply rubbish to the farmers. So it takes away the farmer's confidence and it eats into our market. So that is a huge problem. Yeah. And then we also, fourth, we need robust policies that not only promotes uh, high input production, but also investment in new agricultural technologies. So if you don't have uh, legislation for on your plant varieties, why would someone invest in research and get uh, technology where they cannot have intellectual property on? So we need uh, such an uh, appropriate uh, 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 framework to, 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 to promote uh, increased uh, production of, of, of inputs. Then uh, uh, the perhaps uh, when I speak to last but not least is uh, access to finance. I know it's something that has been talked of so much about uh, improving access to finance. To me, I think uh, there has been a massive change. Uh, commercial banks are less negative compared to like when I just started. Uh, it was very difficult to access finance for any kind of agribusiness. But the last 10 years, it has been improving. But the challenge I see is not the finance not being there but having financial products that uh, can support the entire value chain. So if it's a seed enterprise, then the seed company needs, from the time you get the parental lines and you bulk your products, you need almost up to three seasons or one and a half years. And uh, if uh, you are going to, to, to get the kind of short-term loan that should be paid in three months or six months, it's not sustainable at all. Then it comes to agro-dealers, and we need the kind of financial products that works for us. Uh, we, we, we had uh, this crazy inflation in Uganda. In 2011, we started the year off with 5% inflation. By November, we were at 30.5. So the banks also hiked interest from something like 18% to 30, 32%. I know it sounds like it's crazy, but that's the reality we live in. But if uh, an, a company that is facing all the weather risk is subjected to such extremes, it becomes very difficult for it to grow into this large multinational and the global enterprise I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. And that uh, brings me to climate change. It's a reality. We are seeing it happening. It's not just something we talk about. The rain doesn't stop when it should stop, and it doesn't come when it's expected. So if there is no primary processing and the rain doesn't stop, the farmer also loses his crop without rural electrification, he cannot store his products, and he cannot even prepare his field for the next production. So all that is lost. And then with the kind of finances we have, all the weather risk is passed to the entrepreneur. Whether it's flood or drought, the whole value chain, the risk is passed to the entrepreneur. So I think financing is not really access, but getting uh, the right uh, products that works for agribusiness and and also the kind of uh, perhaps uh, crop insurance that works because if the infrastructure is not there meteorological stations are not in the production zones it's very difficult for anybody to accept to insure so those are things that we can think of at 
as of now, banks, I think only one bank offers crop insurance at 5%, and if somebody's borrowing at 20%, I think you see that it's, uh, it's quite a, a large bill. And then, uh, finally, market information is also very necessary for to, to, to ensure that we have a well-functioning agricultural input market, and specifically for the seed sector, you can't depend on rain-fed agriculture. You need some kind of irrigation. But the financing to put up an irrigation infrastructure, you need a 20-year loan. How These are banks that give you one, three-year loan, so somebody must come with the kind of financing that, that works for, for us. So I think in, in, in summary, farmers, yes, can be linked to markets, but uh, linking them to markets takes more than just uh, focusing on the farmer itself. To us, we should focus on the value chain that drives, enables the quality inputs to get to the farmer so that they achieve the kind of productivity levels that is necessary, but also the, the ones that uh, focus should be on the output drivers of output market demand so that they can add value to the farmer's product and also they can uh, compete globally and regionally so that they do not fail to, to sustain that, that supply. And I, I just uh, believe uh, if uh, we, we focus on the full value chain, then success is possible and farmers can be linked to market successfully. I'll answer questions if I've left out anything, but just shared our experience. Thank you.